We've seen Intel's latest CPU, that's a honk and wonk and chomper, also NVIDIA's giving you new features for free, and AMD is finally not lying about their motherboards. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This is Monday, March 27th, 2023. And we're going to start off today talking about just a little update from a story from last week's episode of Hot News. There's a vulnerability found in Microsoft's snipping tool on Windows 10 and 11, and they have issued a patch to fix that so that your screenshots no longer are vulnerable to have their markups removed. So that's all situated and good. And what's probably not as good for Intel is a leak of their upcoming next generation Xeon CPUs, and these things are just... I didn't think they could get much bigger, but they are massive. So this is gonna be based on the LGA 7529 socket, which 7529 is corresponding to the number of pins that are on the motherboard or the contacts on the CPU. 7,529 pins, and you can see it compared to a previous generation Xeon from Intel on these Granite Rapids and Sierra Forest flagship Xeon processors that are supposed to come out later next year. These things are supposed to be some of the fastest chips known to man it's not quite clear how many cores they're supposed to have, but there have been rumors of up to 334 with Intel utilizing their hybrid architecture to have big cores, little cores, all of that. And it's supposed to be up to 500 watt TDP and 12 channels of DDR5 memory, 96 PCI Express 5.0 lanes. These are gonna be actually really impressive CPUs to finally potentially get them back into the running to compete with AMD and their Epic servers. Epic only goes up to 96 cores at the current moment, so it's possible that these next generation Granite Rapid CPUs might be able to compete with them. It's not quite clear how the hybrid architecture is going to work in a server environment and what type of performance you're gonna get out of something like an efficiency core, but currently, in Intel CPUs are only on 4,600 pins. The next ones are gonna be on 7,200 pins. This is just, you can't, you can't win. You can't, everything has to get bigger. Just bigger numbers all of the time. AMD's socket is only 6,000 pins. It's, whew, that's a lot. You know what else is a lot? Today's video is sponsored in a good way. Today's video is sponsored by Anchor and their brand new Everfrost powered cooler. The powered cooler comes with a 299 watt hour battery for making sure that whatever you put in it stays cool for a long while. It comes in three different sizes of 33, 43, and 53 liters, which can hold up to two times the amount of items as a traditional cooler, since this one doesn't require ice and can run off of the battery pack to keep everything cool. It has a high efficiency cooling compressor and 50 millimeters of insulation to make sure that the heat stays out and the cool stays in for longer. And it it can take just 30 minutes to cool down to zero degrees Celsius when it's 25 C out and can last up to 36 hours at that temp, which is long enough to unplug it on Friday for a camping trip and then have it last until you get back into the car to go home on Sunday. And even better, if you have the 33 liter refrigerator, you can keep it at four degrees Celsius to give you up to 42 hours of battery life, plenty of time to keep all of the things you need cool. And I'm personally using it right now to keep all of my sodas and my meats cool because I don't have enough room in my regular refrigerator. And so it works well plugged in even at home. You can also charge it with your car's 12 volt plug or even with solar panels. The detachable battery can also come out of the cooler to be used as a power bank with two 12 watt USB A ports and one 60 watt USB C port. It also has a smart display, mobile app for convenient tracking, a bottle opener, six inch wheels for rolling around and even an expandable table. And you can even use the pull rod to make sure that you're dragging it through wherever you happen to be camping. This is an exciting new product Anchor will be releasing this spring, but only during this crowdfunding phase can you get 40 5% off. You click the links below to reserve your cooler and claim the discount. Big thanks to Anchor for sponsoring today's video. And while Intel is increasing the size of their CPUs, they're decreasing the size of their graphics driver size with it being reported previously that they had one of the largest drivers out there because I mean, there's only three, but they were over one and a half gigabytes at one point, And now it has dropped to just 600 megabytes because Intel has been constantly working on the development of their software to make sure that they're in line with industry expectations. AMD's roughly 600 megabytes, NVIDIA is a little bit higher at 859, but Intel definitely trying to make it so that their drivers don't need over a gig of space. And you can see just the progression that they've made in their drivers at launch. They were at 844 megabytes. They've ballooned up to 1.3 gigabytes at one point and now are dropped down to 604. Good job, Intel. We love to see that type of improvement, but a lot of the improvement that we've ever seen in terms of microprocessors and the PC industry is thanks to one man, Gordon 
Gordon Moore over at Intel, and it was reported on Friday that he had passed away. He was the visionary who co-founded Intel, served there for a very long time until 1987, and at which point he became the chairman until 1997, and then after that served as chairman emeritus, and is the reason we have the term Moore's Law, which was the idea that transistor density would double every year or every two years, depending on at what point Moore's Law was established, but it was named after his namesake. He was a legend in the industry, a pioneer among semiconductor professionals, and it is uh, with great honor that we pay respects to his passing. And now I'm going to pass this on over to Reese so he can give you the deals. Yo, happy Monday. Welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend, and thankfully, I have some good deals to start your week off right. Like this John Kang portable 15.6 inch 1080p monitor. I'm a huge fan of portable monitors. I have one chilling underneath the camera there so I can see the current feed, but I also use it for Spotify, Discord, stream chat, that kind of thing. It's nice to have a secondary monitor when I have a small desk. And thankfully, you can pick this one up for $89.99, which is $80 off and the lowest price in 30 days. And then next up, we have the Corsair K70 Pro. This Opto mechanical keyboard is going for $99.99, which is also $80 off, 44% off, and the lowest price in 30 days. And next up, we have the PlayStation 5 God of War Ragnarok bundle. If you've been waiting to pick up a PS5, honestly, you could not do better than this game. 9 out of 10, one of my favorite games I've ever played on PlayStation. In general, actually, one of my top five games. You can currently pick up this bundle for $509.99, which is $50 off. Free game. And then if you did pick up the PlayStation 5, then you can pair it with this Astro gaming a50 wireless headset with the base station for the playstation it is refurbished but that does mean you can pick it up for 159 dollars 99 which is 90 dollars off and i like this headset get it and that's it those are the deals for today you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time i'm hand you off back to brave for the rest of your hot news cheers thanks buddy nvidia's got a great deal for everybody though they're actually going to give you more performance on their gpu something that they were only giving to the higher end clients nvidia increasing the amount of video streams that you can process with their nvank encoder previously it was soft limited to just three video streams simultaneously with the higher end quadro cards being able to support more but now with the latest update that nvidia's rolled out secretly without telling anybody they can now support up to five streams and this is going to apply to a whole bunch of nvenc cards that are out there not just the rtx 30 or 40 series so you don't have to be on the latest to benefit from nvidia's new update for you let me know if that helps you out did you need more than three nvenc streams i want to hear from you down below in the comments and amd wanted you to hear about fsr 3.0 which they talked about over at gdc detailing a lot of the things that they want to implement in their upscaling technology however one of the things to note is that they have not given us a timeline of when this will come out besides that it's supposed to be in 2023. FSR3 is supposed to take everything that was good about their upscaler giving you faster frame rate for very little visual quality costs but then bring out some new implementations in terms of video interpolation and making it so that you could potentially get up to two times the amount of performance for the actual same loss in quality at least according to AMD right now and it's also going to be under an open source license to help provide more more details to the community about it and hopefully have faster adoption amongst game developers. So it does look like they're taking a similar approach to what Nvidia has done with DLSS 3, giving you frame insertion or interpolation technology and help to drive it forward. And additionally, they're saying that they're going to work on latency reduction, which is something that Nvidia has also been working on with the reflex technology, because that's something that you increase when you interpolate the frames, you increase latency. And so you need to have something else that's decreasing latency at the same time in order to make sure that the gameplay stays smooth and good for your eyeballs. And something that's going to stay good and smooth for your wallet is AMD's processors because they continue to get price drops, at least if you're in China. The non-X series processors are getting their first price drop ever only in China at the current moment, but they are going down a few bucks to be below their MSRP of what they launched at, going down from 429 on the 7900 down to 370 US dollars, at least the equivalent exchange rate. Currently, we have not seen that anywhere else in the world, at least from AMD. AMD's official standpoint. Currently, the best bet that you're going to get is the 7900X, which is going for below the 7900. Also comes with Star Wars Jedi Survivor in case you want it. The only reason you would potentially go with the 7900, the only good argument I've heard is that the 7900 includes a cooler. So you're saving a few bucks there in case you want to do that. But in case you want to save a few bucks overall when building your system, you're likely waiting for AMD's A620 motherboards, which have yet to be shown off by AMD at any point. But now we're finding some 
details coming out in a BIOS update for the ASUS Tough Gaming A620M, as well as some details coming out about Gigamite motherboards. A620 looks like it should be rolling out, hopefully in the near future. Hopefully before the end of the year, AMD is very clearly not prioritizing the lower end of stuff, especially with the fact that they promised $125 motherboards and they didn't deliver on that until like two weeks ago when one of them went on sale down to 125 bucks. And then AMD was like, look at what we did. Look at how great we are. But now finally, actually, we're getting those $125 motherboards that are not on sale. The previous one that did go on sale was this ASRock B650M. It was 125 bucks after $15 off. But now you can pre-order this Gigabyte B650M for $125. Technically, it's a price drop of five bucks, but considering it hasn't even come out, yeah, I'm gonna say that's the official price. This is finally AMD keeping their promise of giving you actual affordable AM5 motherboards. I, affordable is still a tough pill to swallow at 125 bucks, but it's at least close to what they promised when they announced this all the way back in last year. Good job, AMD, for finally getting there. And I finally got to the end of this episode of Hot News. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow, my friends.